about this now, Johannesburg Mayor Jeff Makubo says his administration is prioritizing service delivery despite being cash strapped. The council has been discussing its 2020-2021 budget. Makubo blames the former DA-led administration under the leadership of Herman Mashaba for leaving the city on the verge of financial collapse. But Mashaba is rubbishing that. He says Makubo uh, should be serving prison time for profiting from his relationship with the Guptas, alleged relationship with the Guptas. Well, let's talk about this now. Joined in studio tonight by the Johannesburg Mayor, Jeff Makubo himself. Uh, Mr. Mayor, very good evening to you. Thank you for coming in. So you say the city is on the verge of collapse. How close are we? No, I'm saying that uh, the city is struggling financially. During our budget review process, uh, adjustment budget process, and our plan for 2020-2021, we realized that uh, we don't even have enough reserves. Uh, we're going to be sh shifting into the new year with about 300 million rands of reserves. Uh, because uh, all the money that was paraded as being money in the bank, quite honestly, was went to pay creditors. So we, we, we will turn around. I think we'll turn around the situation. I'm talking to uh, the team in finance uh, to build up the reserves uh, that we need for the future. Municipalities, including metros, have been going under administration lately. Is that the direction that Johannesburg is headed? No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, we, we, we are putting in place uh, mechanisms to collect more money to not lose electricity, not lose water. Uh, so I'm very focused on ensuring that we rebuild the city's finances. We've done this before and we can do it again. Right, I want to just go through some of the issues that you raised because uh, some of the key issues that you spoke about today were issues around the emergency services in Johannesburg at the JMPD, Metro Police Department, as well as the insourcing of security guards. But let's go through it bit by bit. You spoke about fire engines, which you say five fire engines in the city servicing five million people, 172 million rand, which you talk about being paid to a service provider in contravention of the Municipal Finance Management Act. That's a large sum of money. Those numbers are startling. Who is going to take the blame and be held to account for that? Well, we saw my predecessor with uh, some auxiliary uh, fire engines to, to extinguish fire, uh, grass fire, uh, saying that they bought fire engines. Instead, they, they paid money uh, to, to a service provider who only uh, delivered uh, 19 of the 34 expected uh, 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 fire engines. Uh, auxiliary fire engines. Uh, already two people have been suspended, but it's not the end of it. Whoever is responsible will go after them. Who are these people? How high up in the chain? They're very high. The, the other one is a group head in fleet, and the other one is a, a director in that department. So you've spoken about corruption and the collapse of the city under the former DA administration led by Herman Mashaba. As you sit here tonight, Mr. Mayor, is there evidence directly linking the former mayor to corruption? No, no, I'm saying that uh, we, the, the whole administration was premised on the fact that it's a very clean administration, very far from that. Uh, for instance, we, 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 with the outsourcing issue, let me go to that now, they, they were supposed to, to, to insource uh, about 2,910 security guards. Yes, it's a true thing, it's a, it's a council resolution, we allowed that. But instead, now we are sitting with 5,200 5, security guards. Where, are they, where do they come from? They're supposed, if they, they, it's a need for security guards, they need to advertise and follow the talent acquisition process. Now they, 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 they employ people under the guise of insourcing. That's not insourcing. But I, what are they doing? I mean, the figure that you're giving, if you were meant to take in just about 2,100 guards and you're sitting with more than double the figure, essentially, where are these 2,000 plus people stationed? What are they doing currently? That's a key question that you have to ask. Uh, where do they come from? Because you insource people who are in the system, uh, on, on the people that were servicing the city from the security companies. Uh, now, we are very clear that uh, these 2,000 are friends and relatives who are brought... All 2,000 of them? Well, I mean, where do they come from? Uh, now we're still investigating where they come from, but uh, we know that they are, they are not in the system. They should have been employed properly within the, the, the process and the policy. Um, but we know that uh, they, they were brought in for political patronage. You say investigations are underway, but you then, in the same sentence, say you know they were brought in by political patronage. By whom, whose relatives are they, and who benefited politically? Of course. I mean, the, 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 the way to keep Mashaba in power, he had to please uh, the people who voted for him. So, so they kept him on a leech, we think that uh, we're going to bring these people and are going to insource them. Uh, and they, he did that. But he said, 
when these people were insourced, the idea was to prevent a further exploitation of security guards by private security companies that had tenders, contracts with the, with the city of Johannesburg to guard the various points. Is that not true? Well, I say it was a council resolution. They could have insourced the 2,910 that were there. We can tell you today that they don't even have tools of trade. They don't have two-way radios. They, they only use their cell phone. The burglaries in the cities have, have gone up. We effectively are insecure in the city. Region D is worse, is worse affected, which is Soweto, is worse affected with the burglaries. So these are people who we think that uh, they are untrained. So we're still going to the bottom of this, but we are quite clear that they should not have been in the city under the guise of insourcing. They should have applied properly. They should have advertised, given more people opportunity to, to, to apply, and then, of course, uh, uh, competitively get into the city. Mm, I want to go back to the political elements, all of this political patronage and the experience thereof. Again, as we sit here tonight, you don't have evidence that the mayor himself, as the political figure that was leading the city of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, was involved in corruption. I'm saying that the whole, the, the whole administration did things that were bordering on untruths, and I think they're bordering on fraud, because you can't say I'm insourcing somebody who was not there. What did he do specifically that bordered on fraud? Well, I, I'm not saying specifically to him. I'm talking about his government. But I'm asking about him specifically, no, no, because no, no, you no. and him have had quite a back and forth about who's corrupt, who's not. <laughs> I'm, not, I don't, I'm, not I'm not in a sparring fight uh, with, with Evan Mashaba. I'm focused on the, on the, on the job at hand. Uh, and I, I don't have, I'm, I'm not saying he himself has done anything wrong, but I, th I know he's, and, uh, he's, he's led an administration that did things wrong. Okay. To the security guards issue, you've got in excess of 2,000 people who you say were hired irregularly, essentially. Yeah. What becomes of them as we sit here tonight? Are you going to fire those guards? No, I'm not going to fire those guys. The first thing we have to do is to regularize them. As I say, we're going after the people who hired them irregularly. I don't think it's any fault of their own that now they're in the city um, and, and, and they're now employed. They've got uniforms. They're probably are stationed uh, somewhere. Um, we just have to regularize them. But in regularizing them, whoever uh, was responsible for the irregularity will be, will be, will be dealt with severely. How long a process is this regularization? Ah, no, it's, 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 we'll do it in about uh, two months or so, just finding out who they are, where they come from, where are they stationed, are they well trained? Uh, because you might find they're not even trained. Are they well trained? And then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll regularize all of them. But it takes me back to the point where you're saying that you're working on the assumption that these are possibly uh, relatives of people in the city. But if these are relatives hired improperly, why should they stay in the jobs? All I'm saying is that the person who's responsible for doing this will be brought to book. The people were employed, how they were employed, how they were brought in, is a subject of intense, intense investigation by our forensic department. But if ENCA, for example, had hired me improperly and there'd been a flouting of process and I was not needed, so to speak, there'd be no motivation to keep me on. So what's motivating you to keep on 2,000 plus people in a city where you say you're short of money, this is an extra expense. You've already spoken about the millions extra paid in overtime. So how does that make sense given your financial predicament? No, you're correct. But uh, they, they were employed, they've got contracts, we look at them. And I think that uh, firing them is a, is a no-no for us. Um, uh, we'll have to look at where we can use them and use them effectively. Let's talk about uh, the Johannesburg Metro Police Department. There have been issues there around uh, the chief, David Tembe. You've spoken about how, for example, there was an investigation going back by a law firm April last year mm -hmm. into allegations against him that he was not functioning as he should have done. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tembe is still the JMPD chief. What is his future? Well, we're carrying on with the investigations. Uh, we have met the senior leadership of JMPD twice. The, the serious allegations that were leveled against uh, Mr. Tembe. We, we spoke to the city manager that we need a process to investigate uh, these allegations further. Uh, as, as early as today, uh, this morning, our office received another letter from the senior managers, uh, uh, grievances and allegations against Mr. Tembe. So we are investigating these allegations and we'll take it from there. Very quickly, the city of Johannesburg was previously run by the ANC. You lost it in 2016 because people simply didn't want you to run Johannesburg anymore. What makes you think you'll do things differently this time? Why should people trust you? Uh, because we're reconnecting with them. Tomorrow we can, we, we can invite you. We're going to Oivro Park to talk to our people, to, to deliver services. We are very citizen-focused, uh, but we'll be on the ground delivering to our people. So you'll do better than Parks, though? 
who lost you the city? Well, I was part of the Pakistan team who will do better this time. You're part of the team that lost? I was part of the MMC finance, uh, but we're still the biggest party in the, in, the, in the city. We just did not make 50% plus one. You were the biggest party when you lost as well, and then people decided they had enough of you. The people stayed at home, but now they... they yes, they stayed at home because they had enough of you. That was a protest, was it not? Yeah, it's more complex than that. <laughs> when people stay at home to avoid voting for you, Mayor, it, it says they feel no inclination to go to the ballot and make sure you return. It, it's a vote of no confidence, essentially. Well, I mean, we've had research, we've reconnected with our people, we know what... What does we the research wrong. say? Well, it says a whole lot of things. Uh, you know, I.e.? Uh, you know, uh, perception of uh, corruption... Uh, our social distance, um, you know, we're not talking to them anymore. So from 2016, we, we were engaged in conversations with our people, you know, from Ivory Park to Orange Farm, uh, you know, saying, look, we are still here, we're still the same people, uh, please come out. And in 2019, they showed, they turned around and they came out. And the issues, as you say, are far more complex, right? It's going to take more than just visits to communities to reassure people that this is not a corrupt administration and out of touch administration remember at some point you were criticized by alexandra people who said why are we talking about bicycle lanes in a community with more pressing needs for example yeah we've been to alexandra with the president uh, even before the 2019 elections uh, post our own anc conference we reflected we spoke about renewal of the organization uh, we spoke about uh, the unity of the organization we spoke about all things that were wrong i mean we there was a, a document in our conference uh, called uh, that reflected on who we are so we, we dream things better. We know we are where we went wrong, and we're not shy to admit that we went wrong. Chief Makuba, Johannesburg Mayor, thank you so much for your time. I suppose only time will tell how things go on from here for this ANC administration. But